Amen. Praise the Lord. And good Sunday morning, my beautiful beloved saints of the Most High God. I would like to share a couple of passages of scriptures out of Psalms uh, 121, then Psalms 122, Psalms 123, and Psalms 124. I will not be reading those entire passages, but just pulling different verses from them. Psalms 121 said, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from which cometh my help. My help coming from the Lord, which made the heavens and the earth. Psalms 122, Psalms 22 and 1 said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Psalms 123, it said, unto thee lift I up mine eyes, O thou that dwellest in the heaven. Psalms 124. If it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, now may Israel say, If it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, when men rose up against us. You know, Jesus is the answer for this world today. Above him, Jesus, there's no other because Jesus is the way. You know, John 14 and 7 Jesus said unto him, even as he is saying unto us, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And I know there is so much going on in our world today that calls our heart to be troubled. I believe John 14 and 7, I want to reference that. John 14. Amen. John 14. 14 and 27 and this really calmed my spirit on yesterday Jesus said in John 14 and 27 he said peace I leave with you my peace I give unto you not as the world giveth give I unto you let not your heart be troubled neither let it be afraid and so even with those two passages of scripture, Jesus is saying, look, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. I am your answer for today. Don't forget about our service on next Sunday, Lord's willing, October the 18th. And hopefully by now, um, the members, you all have touched base with your fellowship leaders to let them know whether or not you will be attending that service and all rules, all guidance uh, still applies. Psalms 91. Thank you all so much, beloved, for coming in and fellowshipping with us on this morning. Thank you so much. And I pray that your ears is open to hear. The word said, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying unto the church. Psalms 91, our canopy of protection. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noise and pestilence. He shall cover thee with His feathers and under His wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and butler. Thou shall not be afraid for the terror by night nor for the error that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasted at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon shall thou trample under feet. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. 
I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. The declaration of our word. The word of God is my source of power. It is my light and my darkest hour. We will speak his word every day, declaring the victory in every way. He has made us the head and not the tail. The gates of hell should not prevail. We are more than a conqueror and we can't be beat. We're standing on top with all things under our feet. We will prosper in everything in Christ. For we walk by faith and not by sight. Every door of utterance and promise to me, I will stagger not through unbelief. In words or deeds, I can do all things. When I speak them boldly, when you speak them boldly, in Jesus' name. Every day, I declare it to be a prosperous one because I have the Father and the Son. Destroying Satan works and the power of sin. We are speaking life into the lives of men. Amen. And I pray that that's what you have been doing. Every negative report that has come your way in the lives of people, I pray that the Holy Spirit raise up a standard in you and you begin to speak life into the lives of those people because Jesus is the light in you. And we want to always allow the light of Jesus to shine in our life and we be the direction pole directing people here and there to get to Jesus who has already said that he is the way the truth and the life. Enjoy the word today and the next voice you will hear will be that of our beloved bishop, Pastor Dr. Willis O. Lewis. Love you. B-B-A-K-L-J. Be blessed and keep loving Jesus. Well, praise the Lord. Thanks to the Most High God. Once again, this blessing to come before you and to come to you and thank you for allowing us to come into your home through live streaming here it is another sunday god has blessed us with today is october the 11th 2020 i'm pastor dr willis lewis pastor of rainbow word christian outreach ministry here in augusta georgia and we are grateful to be here once again to bring forth the word of god and I do want to say I thank you, uh, Rhema family. I appreciate everybody. I appreciate everyone who is streaming in right now. We thank you uh, for all our CCI pastors, all uh, my spiritual mother in the faith, Pastor Valerie Holcomb, the Chop family. We continue to pray for you all, that God continue to use you all, to bless you all, and that you all continue to move forward. All our CCI pastors, all our pastors here, and the CSRA, pastors all over the world. You know, I'm not just limited to certain ones, but pastors all over the world who are bringing forth the word of God, who, who are teaching us about Jesus Christ and him crucified, his death, burial, and resurrection. And also all our covenant churches, God bless you and God keep you, that you continue to move forward in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I'm sitting here looking at my wife. She's looking so delicious and everything. You know, uh, 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 Minister Lord, put the camera back on her right quickly. And yes, just, just put it back on. Look how beautiful she's looking today. Praise the Lord. Amen. I start to skip live streaming today and just say, okay, look here. Y'all catch me on the rebound. But <laughs> nevertheless, thank God Amen. for her. She's such a beautiful sweet. person inside Amen. and out. Thank God for her. And uh, once again, I want to say thank you. Uh, Rayma family for your continued giving you all have been a blessing to keep the ministry still going forth Even though we are in the building only once a month right now and as God move upon my heart We'll look at doing maybe two 
of service a month. But right now, we just want to take it one day at a time because the, we know within that 30-day period, it gives me and it gives you all that opportunity just to see if anybody had contracted the, um, the coronavirus. Because one thing we have been doing We've been taking all precautions, you know, hand sanitizing, you know, checking, you know, the temperature. And also you had to fill out the Corona, uh, the Corona uh, checklist to make sure that you're not coming in sick. And we uh, try to do everything much as possible just to make sure that you are safe inside the building. We're practicing social distancing. Uh, the chairs are spread apart. And we know if you came in the same vehicle, you know, we want the, those people to try to stay together. But nevertheless, we're just thankful that we can continue to bring the gospel to you through live streaming. And now we're ready to get into the word of God. And before I do, go with me in the word of prayer. And I always like to invoke the Holy Spirit presence, even though he's been with me ever since I've been up this morning studying. He's been with us ever since we have accepted him as Accept the Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord of our lives. But let us pray. Father in heaven, thank you once again for allowing your Holy Spirit just to empower preachers all over the world. Even on this day and each and every day, God. Even an impromptu uh, message that we might have to bring. Even if someone come to us just like Nicodemus came to you by night. We'll be ready in season and idle and out of season, ready to preach the gospel when they want to hear it and even when they don't want to hear it. Father, thank you for your anointing. Thank you for your power. Thank you for the forgiveness of our sins through Jesus Christ. Father, we trust Jesus' saving blood and his healing blood. And we thank you for his delivering blood, his cleansing blood, who cleanses us from all our sins. And we just have to confess and ask you to forgive us. And I do ask that you forgive us of anything we have said wrong, done wrong, or thought wrong that was contrary to your will and your word. Have your way here on today. And I pray each and every one who is listening will hear this message on today. And they will continue to grow in grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and to continue to move forward in him. And we give your name, glory, honor, and praise. We bless you forevermore. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It's still all about him. Hallelujah. Yes. I'm going to continue to talk about uh, combating false teaching, preaching, and doc doctrine, not having itching ears. Come on, but the Holy Spirit allowed me to do a little turn on this Sunday. You know, he spoke to me last Sunday about the message I'm going to bring forth to you on today. And it still falls in line with what we've been talking about. Now, I have given you several things, and we talked about those several things that we need to do to uh, combat false teaching. And you all know them, and we have went over them. However, just uh, for those who might be screaming in for the first time now, I'm just going to briefly go over these. I'm not going to go over these in detail because you can go back to our website yes, at, the, at rwcom.org and go back and view the previous messages and you will see what we've been talking about. But we were saying here, and I've been teaching on how to combat false teaching, and preaching, and doctrine, not having itching ears. And there were nine things that I brought out and that we were discussing. And I only got to the, uh, in depth, the second one, but we are getting ready to start on the third one. However, we're going to talk about something else today, but still in line with, uh, with this teaching. Now, the first one we said in uh, order to combat false teaching, uh, preaching, uh, and, and doctrine, and not having itching ears, first thing we got to do, number one, if we all do these things, we won't fall. Watch this. Number one, preachers. We got to preach the word of God. And there are strictures to qualify each and every topic that I'm bringing forth to you. Number two, elders, preachers, we got to feed the flock of God. See, that's the difference between preaching and teaching and feeding. Number three, we got to study the word of God. Number four, you got to give heed to reading the word of God. Number five. Don't give heed to seducing spirits. Number six, meditate in the word. 
Number seven, avoid foolish and unlearned questions. Number eight, grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Number nine, and this for all church members, members, listen, embrace, and apply the teaching of the Word of God from the Bible, the B-I-B-L-E, that your senior pastor, your senior leader is teaching you. Learn to submit to his or her authority and their leadership. Because, see, they're not there just to uh, just to uh, try to get your money. And you know that there are some people out there just for that reason. But true pastors watch over your soul. And we're more concerned about your soul than anything else that we can get from people. Because I want to know, do you know Jesus? I want to know, are you saved? I want to know, are you growing in the Word of God? I want to know, are you studying the Word? I want to know, are you being nourished up in the Word? You know, because the Bible even tells us the fivefold ministry is for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, and for the edifying of the body. But I put a little twist on that, not changing the Word of God, but something to help us to remember those three things, according to Ephesians chapter 4. I use the, the acronym PEW, P-E-W, because that's where the saints of God sit. That's where the parishioners sit. They sit in the pew while the uh, minister or the pastor or whoever brings forth the word of God is on the pulpit. Now, I, the reason why I use that, I say the word PEW, P-E-W or the acronym PEW, P-E-W. P is for the perfecting of the saints. E is for the edifying of the body. And W is for the work of the ministry. I'm not changing the word. I just did this to help you to understand a little better so that way you will know what we all supposed to be doing whenever you hear this word. Because that's what we're supposed to do. Perfect you, mature you, build you up, edify you, make you strong in faith help you to grow in the grace and knowledge. And so that way you can get out and work the ministry. That's what it's all about. Working the work of Christ, doing the work of Christ. Jesus said, I must work the works of him that sent me while it's day. The night cometh, no man can work. So we must continue to work the work. And we know faith without works is dead. Amen? And so those are the things that we are talking about. But today I'm going to talk about um, the spiritual warfare, the right, spiritual sir. warfare. Now, I want you to turn your Bibles with me to Ephesians chapter 6. I'm going to read verse 10 through 20, and I need to read this in its entirety. The reason why, because it's going to help you to understand what I'm going to bring forth to you on today. And uh, when we look in Ephesians chapter uh, 6, verse 10 through 20, I'm going to be reading from the King James Version. You might have a different version of the Bible. However, I want you to really listen. Now, let me tell you something. When I was preparing this message, it seemed like all kind of things start happening. So I will lose time trying to bring forth this message because Satan knew that the Lord had given me a message to so that way, you, as the people of God, can recognize and realize and understand who the real enemy is. Right, come on, sir. Do you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And we'll talk about that. Are you in Ephesians chapter 6? All right, all right. Let's look in verse 10 through 20. It says, finally, my brethren. And that word brethren, it doesn't mean just brothers in Christ. That word brethren with the R-E-N at the end of it. It means the brothers and sisters in Christ. It's a plural form showing both genders. It's not a male gender word. It said, finally, my brethren. Why he just want to write to the brothers and not to the sisters? Because the sisters got to be saved too. Now you go back. Now see, y'all got me all in the book right now. See, if you go back to Acts chapter 2, when the Holy Spirit came, it didn't just come on the brothers. The Holy Spirit came on 120. Mary, the mother of Jesus, was one of the uh, women that were in the that was in the upper room who also received the Holy Ghost. Mary and other women. There was 120. 
And then as you continue to read in Acts chapter 2, notice what the scripture says. It says, in the last day said God, I think around verse 16, somewhere in that area. In the last day said God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, not just the men, but all flesh, all human beings. He said, your sons and your daughters, that's male and female, shall what? Prophesy. Your old men shall see visions, your young men shall dream dreams. On the handmaiden and the servants, he is going to pour out his spirit. That's include the women. Hello, somebody. Are you with me? So it covers everyone. I got to sneeze, y'all. Y'all excuse me. <laughs> mm. Bless the name of Jesus. I told you it was a struggle. And this is the first time I think I sneezed, you know, since I've been bringing forth this message called I'm going to deal with the devil on today. And you need to know it's the devil who we uh, uh, wrestle against, who we wrestle against. And so I want you to understand that. So the Holy Spirit came upon male and female. Can I turn to Acts just for a minute? You can turn there too, Acts chapter 2. Just look at something because I don't want you to miss this. Because some people say, well, women shouldn't be preaching. Well, if it wasn't for the women, you know, a lot of men wouldn't be saved right now. Hello, somebody. You ain't got to agree with me. I'm not preaching to no jury. I'm preaching to the body of Christ. Hallelujah. In Acts chapter 2, look in verse 16. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And if you go back to Joel chapter 2, verse 28 through 32, you will see where this is written. And it says, and, the, and it shall come to pass in the last day, said God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall what? Prophesy. That word prophesy means to preach the infallible, inerrant, matchless Word of God, unadulterated Word of God. That's what it means. This means to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. You, they, uh, my, your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see vision. Your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens, the handmaidens, who that referring to? I think you can figure that out. I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall also, watch it, they shall prophesy. Do you see this? So don't think that the that preaching is only limited to men. I understand, I know what the Bible says, I know what some of you all are going to say, what the Bible says, the women need to keep silent in church. But you got to understand what was going on during that time. What was happening in the church, the men sat on one side of the church, the women sat on the other side, the women was hollering across the aisle trying to ask the husband, well, what is he talking about? And that's why Paul was telling the women just to be quiet. And if you read on, it says, if they want to learn anything, let them learn it from their husband at home. It wasn't saying that they could not uh, preach and teach. It says, whatever you did not understand, wait till you get home. Let your husband explain that to you instead of you all hollering across the aisle trying to get understanding. That's why I said, let the women keep silent in the church. Hello, somebody. Let's move on because I want to get into the message. Well, I only got to three words. My God, somebody is want, want to know something today. Ephesians, let's go back to verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness. Let your feet, notice this, and your feet shroud with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. 
Praying always, know this, I'm going to verse 18, because this is part of the armor. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an, an, an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. And may the Lord add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his holy word, and all God's people say, Amen. 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 So how can we combat false teaching, preaching, doctrine, and not having an itching ears. Well, it is important that we understand what type of warfare we're fighting. Uh, this is not guerrilla warfare, nor Iraqi freedom, nor another desert shield or desert storm, nor Afghanistan, nor Republicans or Democrats. This is a continuous warfare that started way back in heaven when Michael and his angels fought against the devil and his angels. And the devil did not prevail, but was cast to this earth. I'm going to give you a qualified scripture, but let me go on a little further because something else is very important I want to talk about. Now, there are several things that are very important for every believer in Christ must be mindful of at all times. Now, I got about six things here. And I want you to jot these down because this is very important. Number one is that we are in a spiritual warfare, according to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. Principalities, we're talking about spirits. We're talking about principality. We even talk about territorial demons. We're talking about principalities, all kind of spirit. For it said, but against. But notice this. Let me go back just for a minute. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Right. Yes, sir. So the fight is not between you and I. Yes, sir. When you see a battle going on between two people, Come there's on, a spirit that has influenced one. Yes, sir. And yes, sometimes sir. the spirit could have influenced both of them. Yes, sir. But if you are a child of God, we're not going to be influenced by Satan's spirit but only by the Holy Spirit because he is the person that would give us the power and authority and the spirit of wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and revelation so we'll be able to discern what spirit that is in that per person yes, that's working in that person, Hallelujah. that causing that person that wants to be in a, uh, a wrestling match with us. But we got to understand, it's not the flesh and blood. So when you get mad at your brother and sister, when you get mad at the other saints, when you get mad at your pastor, on, when you get mad on. at your first yeah. lady, when you get mad at your elders, your deacons, and leaders in the church, when you start getting sir. mad at people in the church, and all of a sudden you just want to leave the church, Glory it's a spirit. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Everybody think that, you know, it's the pastor, it's the leaders, yeah. it's the deacon, it's the elders. No, it's a spirit. Spirit. See, one thing I know and I understand as being a pastor, if people come into church with problems and issues and all of that, hey, no problem. That's why you're here. We're here to give you the word to help you through that. Well, when a person brings a spirit in there, now we got to go into spiritual warfare. There have been many a times when I start preaching, even before I start preaching, I had to change the message because somebody brought a spirit in the church. And I had to deal with that demon. I had to get I had to get that mess out of their mind. I had to get that demon out of their mind because they came in with a bad spirit. Not that they had issues. They came in with a bad spirit. And, I, and the Holy Spirit, through revelation and through, through the discerning of spirit, allowed me to see that somebody came in here with a bad spirit. And that's why you got to understand it's not the flesh and blood. You might look at the person and think it's the person, but there is something that has influenced that person, yes. and that's what it is. It's a spirit. You know, Satan has been doing this from day one. Ever since man were, uh, was put on this earth. And I'm going to talk about that. But let me continue on because I want to stay 
within what I'm talking about. Because if I miss some of this, if I don't, if I don't stay with what, uh, 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 with, with what I have here, what I receive from the Spirit of God, I'm going to miss something. But nevertheless, I know the Holy Spirit allowed me to have some, uh, some excursions every once in a while. So that way I can just bring some understanding to what already has been said. So understand this, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. So we are in a spiritual warfare. That's what we got to understand every day. Oh yeah, do we get mad at each other? Yes. Do people have verbal confrontation? Yes. yes. Uh, do people look at each other funny? Yes. Do people get mad and don't want to come to church? Yes. But still, you got to have enough word in you wow. To recognize to that somebody yes, is Lord. not in line yes, with the word. You know, see, the Bible said, be angry, but sin not. See, angry itself is not a sin. It's an emotion God has given us, and there's some things we should be angry about. But see, when you're angry with your brother or with your sister or somebody else in the church, another saint, it, it doesn't even have to be a saint. It could be a, a, a sinner. It could be some a, a, a family member. But when you are angry and you allow the sun to go down upon your anger, in other words, you're mad and you're upset, now you become bitter. Yeah, and see, you, get, you cannot allow your anger to turn into sin. Hallelujah. And the way our anger turns into sin is when we start saying all kinds of things, Jesus. start cursing and ready to fight, and now look what happens. Now Satan doesn't influence and has exacerbated the situation, all because you allow him to speak to your mind. And remember what I told you earlier in some, some of the previous messages. Thoughts do not have power. We give power to thoughts when we start speaking it and start acting our thoughts out. You know, people talk about mental health, and that's what happened. People love to begin to allow these thoughts. They hear voices, and they allow these thoughts uh, to speak to, to, to speak to their minds, they hear things, and then they start acting out different things, all because they don't have the power in them to rebuke the thoughts, and they don't have enough word in them to help them to understand, I got power over my thoughts. I'm going to talk about that a little later. But understand the spiritual warfare that we're in. Because, see, we can try to combat false teaching, but even when people start getting into false teaching, false doctrine, it's the spirit that, that's behind all of that. Why you leave the word of God and start talking about something else? Why you leave the word of God and start talking about something that's not even in the Bible? And when people leave the word of God and start talking about something that's not in the Bible, and you ask them to qualify that with what the Bible said, they can't. Because they're only going off with something what they heard or said they, 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 they had itching ears because it sounds good. I'm not talking about babes in Christ. I'm talking about people who've been in the gospel, who have been Christian leaders, who have been pastors, evangelists in the fivefold ministry, you name it, bishop, teachers. It doesn't matter, missionary, prophetess, you name it, you can name it. The thing is, they have left this word. And you know what? The, what's so sad about that? They are the biggest threat to the body of Christ. My, 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 my. Because all this word they know. It's like now they became a double agent. Whose side are you on? We sing the song, whose side are you leaning on? Are you leaning on the Lord's, side? the Lord's side? You need not only lean on the Lord's side, you need to stay on the all Lord's right. side. But here's the thing. Notice what the Bible said in the book of Psalms. If it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, now may Israel say, if it had not been for the Lord, say, I want the Lord to be on my side. Yes, sir. Hello, somebody. I want him to be on my side because the Bible said, if God be for us, who can be against us? But when you start leaving this good word and start preaching something uh. else, you now have gotten into Satan territory, and what you are doing, you're doing the same thing that Satan did way back in the Garden of Eden. Man, I don't got ahead of myself. Let me slow down and take my time. Wow. I say I'm going to be on this one for a little bit because it's still dealing with uh, false teaching and false uh, uh, preaching and false doctrine. 
For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principality, against power, against the rule of darkness, world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Yes. I'm bringing this out because you've got to understand we in this spiritual life, we are fighting a spiritual battle. We're not fighting a carnal battle. When the soldiers went to Desert Shield, Desert Storm, that was a natural battle. When they went to Afghanistan, when they went to Af uh, uh, Iraq, Iraq, when they went to World War One, World War Two, when they went to the Korean Wars, when they went to um, Vietnam, when they went to Grenada, when they went to Honduras, all these different wars that we done fought in. And I know this, not all of them. That was a natural war where we needed natural weapons because we were fighting against a natural enemy. <laughs> But now we are in a spiritual war Jesus. where we who are born again of the spirit, we now belong to a God. Hallelujah. This is a spiritual battle. Yes. And now yes. since we have left Satan and we have joined God, Satan is doing everything to try to pull us back yes. to yes. him yes, and try to cause us to lose our faith. I'm going to talk about it. Hallelujah. Let me go on the phone. Number two. It is our faith that we are fighting for. I said, number one, we are in spiritual warfare. And I had to lean on that one because, see, if you don't understand that you're in, a, you're in a spiritual warfare, you'll always look at people just like they're the enemy. And, and, and the people are not the enemy. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Oh, yeah. Now, can a person have a bad spirit, bad attitude? Yes, they can. And that's the flesh. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. Because you're born of the flesh, you take, you take on the nature of the flesh. But that which is born of the spirit is spirit, according to St. John chapter 3. And even the Bible says in Romans, and I want to read this, Romans chapter 8. Let me go there just for a minute. Romans chapter 8, about this carnal mind. Man, this thing is a mess. Let's look at this. Romans chapter 8. I'm going to take you there just for a minute. Give me a second too because I want to I want to really look at something. Are you in verse 1? Romans chapter 8 verse 1. Notice what it says. It says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit is life in Christ Jesus had made me free from the law of sin and death. That's what your Bible said. I hope and trust that's what it says. Verse 3 says, For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sent his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So here's the question. Are you walking after the flesh? Or are you walking out <laughs> after the spirit? Oh my. If you're walking after the flesh, the condemnation is coming to you. But if you're walking after the spirit, therefore there is now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Yeah. And when you go to Galatians chapter 5, you start in verse 16 all the way down to verse 19, it tells you about the works of the flesh. And then when you look in verse 22 and 23, it tells you about the fruit of the Spirit, which is very important. Now look at this, verse 5. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. That's why people got bad attitudes, because they do the things of the flesh. Oh, They're after the flesh. They do mind the things of the flesh. Word. Those who, do, who are dominated by the sinful nature think about sinful things. That's what he's saying. But those who are controlled by the spirit think about spiritual things that, that please the spirit. In other words, know that this, for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things that are of the spirit. So are you only thinking about things of the flesh or thinking about things of the spirit? Mm -hmm. Let me see if I can find this scripture right quick. I'll hold your finger here uh, in Romans because we're coming back. I'm going to go to the book of Colossians. Colossians, I believe, I think it's chapter 3. 
Yes, I love using my Bible. I have my iPad too, but I love using my Bible. Because I, I can find stuff in my Bible real fast, quick, in a hurry. Let me see if this is where I want to go. Yes, go to Colossians chapter 3 and verse 1. It says, If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection, in other words, set your mind, set your affection on things above, not on things on this earth. For ye are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then, ye, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Verse 5, it ah, says, Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth. Mortify means to put to death. This old flesh, the carnal mind, that's what it's talking about, the carnal thinking. Mortify the deeds of the flesh. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth. And then it lists a whole list of things here. Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concussiveness, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Now, I brought this out because I want you to understand that if you have been risen with Jesus Christ, you need to seek those things which are above where Christ sits on the right hand of God. Mind not the earthly things, but put your mind on things above and not on things of this earth. Because notice this. Now, going back to Romans chapter 8, watch this. I'm going to read verse 5 again. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. Why? Because their, their affection are set on things of the flesh. Now, that doesn't mean we don't want a house, a car, or a mate, or money, or a job. God knows we're on this earth. This is what we need to survive and all of that. Yes, we need those things. That's not the point. But when you allow those things to possess you instead of you possessing them, in other words, things got you instead of you got things, yes. and see, this is where we go wrong. Come on, Bishop. And so it says here, for they that are after flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after spirit the things of the spirit. In other words, but those who are controlled by the Holy, Holy Spirit think about things that please the spirit. So who you want to please? That's the question. No, Verse 6. It says, for to be carnal-minded is death, but to be spiritual-minded is life and peace. Now, I'm trying to show you something here because it's important that we understand we have a spiritual life and we still have this old natural man that still, you know, we carry around with us. Mm. I know some people say, well, we either natural or spiritual. I truly understand ex exactly what you're saying. However, this natural man is still, this body is still being saved. And remember what I told you a couple of messages back. Yes, that the body is futuristically being saved. Mm -hmm. Because this one got the chain. The soul is progressively being, being saved. Mm -hmm. So because why? The soul can get out of control. But when you get saved, the spirit is instantaneously saved. And so now, watch this. For to be carnal minded is death. But to be spiritual minded is life and peace. In other words, so letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death. But letting, your, letting the spirit control your mind leads to life and peace. So which one is going to control your mind? The carnal or the spiritual? Now let's go on to verse 7. Because the carnal mind is enmity. Against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can it be. The sinful nature is always hostile to God. Yeah. It never did obey God's law, and it never will. The carnal mind, the flesh, will not, and it do not want to obey God. My God. Yes, sir. It never have, and it never will. Amen. That's why we had to be born again. That's born why again. Jesus told uh, Nicodemus, except a man Ooh, be born Lord. again. Yes, because you were born naturally of yes, your Lord. human parents, parents, and you took on the nature of your human parents. But then Jesus said, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not, marvel not, I say unto you, you must be born again. It is imperative for every yes, person who was born into Hallelujah. this world to be born again of the spirit of the living God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
So now you can be you can belong to God the Father. And it says, verse 8, Romans 8 and 8, So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. I but I love verse 9. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwells in you. The question is, do you have the spirit of God dwelling in you? If you're born again, you should. And see, here's the thing what people got to understand. When you give your life to Christ and accept Jesus as Savior and Lord of your life, and you were born again of the Spirit. See, now you take on the nature of God. But you still need that deuteronomous power to be filled with the Holy Ghost. And we talk about being baptized with the Spirit. And that was that's what the evidence of speaking in tongues. When you read Acts chapter uh, 2, and then when you go to 1 Corinthians chapter 14, and other verses of Scripture, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. When you read those verses of Scripture... It let us know, too, that we need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. When you go to Acts chapter 10, and even Paul, when, even Peter went to Cornelius' house. And when you go to Acts chapter 19, when Paul had to deal with uh, brethren who heard the word, but they didn't even know that, that the uh, Holy Ghost can be received. And so it's important that you receive the Holy Spirit as well. Oh, yes, when you accept Christ, don't, don't get me wrong. That doesn't mean you're not saved. Yes, you are saved. Because the only thing saved us is shed blood of Jesus Christ. Now you need to be born again. You need to be filled with the Spirit. The Bible tells us to be not drunk with wine for in its excess, but be filled with the Spirit. So we need to be filled with the Spirit of God. And it says, so then they that are in, uh, that are in the flesh cannot please God. Verse 9. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God dwell dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is not of his. If you do not have the Spirit of Christ, if you are not saved, if you are not born again, you do not belong to the Lord. And the Bible tells us, when you look in 2 Timothy uh, chapter 2, and look somewhere around verse 17, 18, 19, and it says, uh, uh, let them who name the name of Christ depart from iniquity. And it says, the Lord knows them who are his. Yes. He knows those who are his. Because in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and earth, some to honor and some to dishonor. But if a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified meat for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. So that is very important for everybody to understand. And so now I wanted to bring you here to show you there's a, a, a distinct difference between the carnal mind and the spiritual mind. They both are in you, battling against you. And watch this. Now let's go to Galatians. Because now I want to show you how your flesh can get involved. And it's really not the devil. Because some of the stuff we blame the devil on, it ain't the devil. It's just us. You just got a bad attitude. Fleshly bad attitude. That's all that is. And then now, can that still be influenced by Satan? Yes, because now you allow Satan to speak. And first of all, Satan will let you get mad first. And now you done got mad in your flesh. And Satan now with his demon come and speak to you and say, Oh, man, you ought to go and give them a piece of your mind. You ought to just go. Look, you should just let him have You know he was wrong. I don't care if he is the pastor. It doesn't matter if he's the pastor or not. She shouldn't have said that. You know, Satan would tell you all kind of nothing. Did you go? Are you in Galatians chapter uh, 5? Look in Galatians chapter 5. Oh, I need to back up to a, verse, a few verses. Let's look at verse 14. It says, For all the law, I'm in Galatians 5 and 14, for all the law is fulfilled in one word, even this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Oh, my, my. Look at verse 15. But if ye bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. Notice this. If, but if you bite and devour, in other words, you act like a bunch of animals towards one another. He said, take heed that you be not consumed or be destroyed one of another. You start biting and devouring and acting like animals towards one another, you can end up destroying one another. And we see that, watch the news, you see that all the time. People are trying to destroy one another. But then look at verse 16. 
Then he goes on and says, This I say then. Walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So are you walking in the spirit? Walk in the spirit and you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusted against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one to the other so that ye cannot do the things that you would. In other words, the flesh uh, war against the spirit and the spirit war against the flesh. They are contrary that's why you got to understand and make sure you know, is this, am I in my flesh or am I walking in the spirit? Oh, I'm mad right now. Am I in my flesh? See, a lot of this ain't the devil. You just got to be able, be able to differentiate, differentiate between three spirits every day when you get up. Number one, you got to know God's spirit. Number two, you got to know the devil's spirit. Number three, you got to know your spirit. Because if you don't know your spirit and know what spirit, don't know that you are operating according to your flesh. Mm -hmm. See, what, what happens is you would think everything is the devil and what it is is not the devil. You might think the other person is operating by the devil and it's not the devil, it's just their flesh. They're in the flesh. But you've got to know God. Because, see, God always going to speak to you in that still, small voice. He always going to confirm something through his word. Satan always going to be contrary to the word of God. Yes, sir. And your flesh always wants to do the thing that pleases it itself. Hello. Are you listening? It says, for the flesh lusted or wars against the spirit, and the spirit wars and fight against the flesh. Watch this. And these are contrary. And in, the, in other words, they are in total, total opposition of each other. The one to the, to the other so that you cannot do the things that you would. Now, there's things that you really want to do, but because there's a battle between your flesh and spirit, you can't. Paul talked about that. I believe that's in Romans chapter 7. But I won't get into all of that right now. But in verse, uh, it goes on to verse 18. It says, but if ye be led of the Spirit, you are not under the law. It says, now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. It lists all these things all the way down to verse 21. Do you see that? Verse 19 through 21. It lists all the things of the flesh. I'm not going to read them all. But then he shows, uh, he shows us the, uh, the opposite of that. Now he said, but the fruit of the Spirit. See, these are the works of the flesh, but here are the fruit of the Spirit. Fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Pastor Lewis, why are you bringing all this out? Because you need to know, is it your flesh or is it the devil? We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Did you get that? We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against spirit. And you got to know God's spirit. And that's why it's so important that we have the word of God according to Hebrews 4 and 12. Yes. For the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, yes. piercing, even dividing asunder the soul and spirit, the joints and marrow. It's a discerner of the thoughts and the intent of the heart. Oh man, I have so much. I don't. Know, I don't even think I'm gonna get through all six of these with the time that I'm. I'm trying to stay uh, within that hour that we are live streaming. Now I can go on and on. I know I can, but I want you to be able to have this. And so I gave you the first one. We're in a spiritual warfare. And number two, I said what? It is our faith that we're fighting for. Let me give you this, and then I'm going to stop it right here. And then we'll continue next week if the Lord Terry has come and blessed us to live. It is our faith that we are fighting for. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12. It says, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Where until thou also, thou art also called, and has professed a good profession before many witnesses. 
We all, we have to fight the good fight of faith. Yes, sir. Yes, People, sir. I got some stuff for Amen. you. But if God Terry has come and bless us to live, I'll get into it next week. I'm going to stop it right there. But if you got the first, got these first two down, yes, this is enough to help you to understand. When you talk about combating false teaching, preaching, doctrine, you got to know there's a spirit that's doing this. And you got to understand that it's your faith that you got to fight for. Because what Satan did all the way back in the Garden of Eden, he twisted the word that Adam and the woman knew. Adam, his wife, knew what to do. And as Eve said, God said for us not to uh, eat of this tree nor touch it. Then the devil came back and said, Yea, had God said, God knows the day you eat of this tree uh, that, that you will you'll be like God, your eyes will be open. You know the story. But we'll get into that a little bit more in detail. And that's all Satan does. He don't get he don't give you a whole bottle of poison and say drink it, it's gonna kill you. Come on, sir. All he does is just drop just a little bit in at a time. Because he knows once that you get enough poison in your spirit, oh he got you. He's gonna kill you. That you're gonna die. But we're not gonna allow his poison to get into us because we're gonna combat it with the word of God and prayer. Amen. Let's stop right there. I trust that you got something out of this word on today. For those of you who may not be saved or listening, and you fail to realize you've been in a spiritual battle all this time. You fail to realize that you've only been born of the flesh and not of the spirit. Now you can be born again and be born of the spirit of God and be heaven saved and knowing now that God is your father. Because that which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the Spirit of God, we now belong to God. That's in St. John's Gospel. Read chapter 3, start with verse 1, when Jesus had that conversation with Nicodemus. And you know something? I am so glad that Nicodemus came to Jesus by night and had that conversation with him. Because if it wasn't for that conversation with, with, uh, between Jesus and Nicodemus, don't you know we wouldn't have St. John 3 and 16? For God so loved the world wow. that he yes, gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. That conversation went on between a ruler of the Jews, one who was profound in the law, but he didn't understand everything because he knew Jesus was different than all the other rabbis or teachers or Pharisees or whatever. He said, no, Nicodemus said, no man can do these miracles that thou does except God be with him. And people, listen, if you don't have God, be, God with you now, mm. you won't be able to enjoy all the blessing that he has for us here and after. And Jesus cuts Cut straight to the chase. He said, Nicodemus, you must be born again. And if you're not saved, you need to be born again. And if you want to be born again, I want you to pray this simple prayer. Repeat this after me. Say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I come to you now, come to you now confessing, confessing that I am, that I am a, sinner. a sinner. I ask you, I ask you to forgive me of my sins, of my sins. And, cleanse me and cleanse me from all, from all unrighteousness. unrighteousness. I, believe I believe in my heart, in my heart. And, I confess and I confess with my mouth, with my mouth that, Jesus Christ that Jesus Christ is Lord, is Lord. And, he is and he is the Son of God. Son of God. He, came, he came, he died on the cross, he, on the cross. he was buried in the tomb. And on the third day, on the third day God, God, you raised Jesus, you raised Jesus from, the from the dead for my righteousness. For my righteousness. Jesus, Jesus, I do now. I confess you. I accept you. And I receive you as my Lord, my Lord 
my master, my master and, my and my savior. Thank you, Thank you for, saving for saving me and keeping my name, keeping my name in, the in the book of life. In Jesus' name. If you believe that, give yourself a hug and continue to love Jesus, continue to grow in grace and knowledge. And I know some people say, well, why do you say keep my name in the book of life? Because it's like this. I, according to the scripture, and I've been reading the word, everybody who's been born into this world, don't you know your name is in the book of life? But the Bible also says that you better pray that your name is not blotted out. Your name can be blotted out the book of life. Meaning that it was there, but then it got blotted out. You know why? Because while you was on this earth, you didn't make Jesus the Lord of your life. So your name got blotted out. So when you read in Revelation chapter 20, verse 11 through 15, down at the last verse, he said, And whosoever was not found written in the book of life, they were cast into the lake of fire. Amen. That's why I say what I said. Thanks to God, I love you, and I appreciate you all. And I want you to continue to enjoy this weekend. I know our soldiers here in Fort Gordon, they enjoy a four-day weekend. I know Monday is Columbus Day. And you all just take take uh, um, time and just spend time with family. Get out and enjoy yourself. I know we've still got this pandemic going on. But listen, be safe while you're out there. You keep that mask on. Yeah, just because you see people with their mask off, don't, that you use the wisdom of God. Keep yours on. Hello, somebody. Keep your hands washed, sanitized. Get you some sanitizer. What we call that stuff? That sanitizer that's stuff. Sanitizer. That sanitizer. And keep your hands sanitized. You know, go to the bathroom while you're out and out and about. Keep your hands washed. And I know you still got to be careful touching the doors and all of that. But keep your hands sanitized. Try to maintain a good, safe distance. But enjoy family. Okay? And then watch the lar large crowds. Because sometimes we like to gather at home and have a lot of people at the house. And people start taking off their masks and get, get very, you know, comfortable. And if you don't watch it, somebody can pick up that coronavirus that way. I have heard testimony. People have called me and told me, Pastor, we had a gathering. I had people, you know, family member got the, got the virus, got the COVID. And I told you all before, I got it. I, I wasn't even in a crowd. Not a crowd of people, but I got it some kind of way. But through the mercy of God, he kept me. And I pray that God continue to keep you all. I love you all and appreciate you all. Continue to pray for Pastor Valerie Holcomb, the Christian House of Prayer, all the CCI pastors, all the pastors of the CSRA, all the covenant churches. We love you and appreciate you. You all continue to move forward. Let me close out in prayer. Father, we bless you and we thank you. And we give your name, glory, and praise. Jesus Christ is exalted. Satan is defeated. And the saints of God are still moving forward. God, we want you to be glorified. Satan stay terrified. And the people of God be built up and edified. And we bless your name forevermore. In Jesus' name. Give you the benediction. Come from Jude chapter 24. Now to him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, to be glory and majesty, dominion, power, both now and forever. Let the church say amen. Rhema, I'll see you all next week in the building. And we'll be live streaming in our building next week. Love you, appreciate you, and remember, it's all about Jesus. It's all about him. God bless you.